morning difference good afternoon depending on where you are joining us from we are gathered here this morning or this afternoon to celebrate God's love in the Eucharist in this mass we continue to pray in thanksgiving to God for the many blessings he has given for the many people he has placed in our lives supporting us at a time like this for the many good people who are making the world you know a better place for everyone else whether with their gifts with their skills with their talents we just thank God for all of them but we also thank God for each other and pray that God may bless every one of us this mass is going to be offered for you for your intentions as we pray for God to help meet our every need I also like to offer this mass for those who have asked prayers at this time for people who are celebrating events today their birthdays their wedding anniversaries or some remembrance of an event we pray that God may grant them the graces they are seeking on a day like this we pray for our sick pray especially for those who are severely sick with coronavirus around the world pray and ask for God's healing intervention we pray for doctors for nurses for all those medical staff who are daily giving extra extra just to help care for our sick may God lavishly bless them and reward them for their services and we pray for everyone else who is in need of God's help right now and may not be able to ask especially people who are so desperate that are maybe thinking of harming themselves or harming someone else that God may send his spirit to visit with them to create some calmness in their spirits and in their souls through this very difficult ordeal our opening hymn today will be we gather together we gather together to sing the Lord's praises to worship the Father to Jesus his Son in the celebration of sin with jubilation we all his holy people whose freedom he won in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our father and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all my dear friends we gathered here to celebrate god's love to prepare ourselves that our prayers and our offerings may be acceptable to God. Let us first acknowledge our sins, acknowledge our unworthiness, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, for the many times we failed to love as you commanded us to we are sorry Lord have mercy Lord have mercy for the many times we did not care for the sheep you entrusted to us we are so sorry Christ have mercy for the many times we discriminated against others whether because of their skin their religion, their gender, their age, or any other consideration. We are sorry. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, Bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and the brothers who were in Judea 
heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him saying, you entered the house of the uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step saying, I was a prayer in the city of Joppa when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large ship coming down lowered from the sky by its four corners. And it came to me, looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four legged animals on the earth of the earth, the wild beast, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter, and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times and then everything was drawn up again into the sky just then three men appeared at the house where we were who had been sent to me from Caesarea the spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating these six brothers also went with me and we entered the a man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house saying, send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is in the house. Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you by which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will baptize, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then, if then God gave them the same gift that he had given to us, who believe in Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. To the song is Hallelujah. As the hind longs for rain waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. At first is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Hallelujah. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Hallelujah. Then I will go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the heart, O God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, be with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief. Sorry. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. 
the hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them this is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I will lay down my life for the sheep I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold these also I must leave they will hear my voice and there will be one flock one shepherd this is why the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again no one takes it from me but I lay it down on my own I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again this command I have received from my father the gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ My dear friends, I would like to reflect with you this morning from the first reading and but especially the gospel reading. I know yesterday we talked about Jesus and his desire to use the metaphor of sheep and shepherd to describe his new people. But today Jesus speaks more about himself as a shepherd and why he chose the title shepherd. Yesterday we talked about why he decided that his people would be known as sheep. Today he tells us why he decides for himself as a shepherd. But before I go there, I want to say something about the first reading because it's very instructive. I'm thinking about something in us that is so resistant to people who are different is it because we think we're better than them we're more favored than them what is it that makes us sometimes like in this case we want to keep people out whom we think don't deserve the love the mercy and the forgiveness of God is it because we were taught to think like that taught to think like that now it doesn't matter however we came to that mindset but it doesn't matter if we stay in that mindset it does matter yeah we may have been miseducated misinformed we may even have been brainwashed to think that somehow God's love someone somebody deserves God's love more than the other person I, I don't believe that is God proud of every one of his children maybe not does God love all of his children absolutely yes he loves everyone the Bible said God does not hate what he created he cannot hate if God will hate anyone, he will not create you. He will not let you to be in the first place. He doesn't hate no one. It doesn't matter who that one is. Not even someone as dangerous and as deadly as a terrorist Osama bin Laden was hated by God. God did not hate him. Was God proud of him? Absolutely not. So God, we must distinguish between God's love and the pride God takes in his children. You see, God did not love Job more than he loved anyone else. But God was proud of Job. God did not love Abraham more than he loved me. But God was prouder of Abraham. God did not love David more than he loved Saul. But God was prouder of, of, of David. And so, 
That is something we need to get right. For some of us, we find it, we think, uh, maybe as Catholics, we're better than people of other denominations. No, the church doesn't make it a better place. The church gives you the structure to be better. Being better, it's up to you. Being better is up to me. The church itself, yes, it's a, it's, it's a church of Christ. But just being a member of that church does not make you a better person than someone else who is Muslim or Jewish or a Protestant or anything else. If you did not take the opportunity that the church offered you, that Jesus offered you through that instrument. And so you realize what Peter was having to deal with here. Now, these are all good people, good Christians, but they could not tolerate someone else joining them who was different. They could not tolerate, they could not see how someone else who had a different lifestyle could be loved by God or how God's mercy could be extended to people like that. How often do we go to church and sit down and spend 30 minutes out of 45 minutes judging people who either did not dress the way we think they should dress to come before God's presence. They came before God's presence, not your presence. Yeah, they may be indecently dressed, but yeah, I may be in spirit, spiritually indecent, but I'm still in God's presence. So what is different? That judgment must be God's judgment alone. That's what I believe. Jesus said to us, says, I will not turn back anyone who comes to me. I will not turn back anyone who comes to me. And that's my Father's will, that I do not turn back anyone. And, and yet, we sometimes stand in judgment, turning back people. We think, don't deserve the love of God, the mercy of God. I hope and I pray that we don't spend all our time keeping people out and keeping ourselves out at the end. I hope and I pray that that we don't spend all our energy keeping people out and then ending up ourselves, staying out because the door was locked while we we're trying to push and shove people to keep them out. So that's the first thing I want to say because towards the end, this is what Peter says. It says, if then God gave them the same gift that he gave us, if then God gave them the same gift that he gave us, who was I? Who am I? Who, where else did I hear those words? I heard those words from Pope Francis. Who am I? To say someone cannot be loved by God. God didn't tell me that. Who am I to do that? So Peter says those words. He says, if God could give his gifts to people that I thought were not good enough, who am I? Who are you? To say they do not deserve the love, the mercy, the forgiveness, and the embrace of the Father. I pray that we will be able to conform to God, not force God to conform to us. We must conform to God. That's what the Apostle Paul says. We must conform our ways to look like Christ, not the other way around. We did not create God. God created us. We must look like God, not God like us. So that's the first thing I want us to quickly um, think about. And I'm going to um, rush to what the Lord himself says here. He speaks of himself as the good shepherd. He adds the qualifier, good shepherd. He, even though the Lord somewhere had um, questioned why someone called him good. But here he says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. So that's what the good shepherd is called to do. Now, I know when we hear shepherd, sometimes our minds immediately goes to your priest, maybe the pope, the bishop, the priest, the deacons or pastors. Yeah, but every one of us participates in shepherding, everyone. As a mother, you are the shepherd of your household. As a father, you are the shepherd of your household. As a child, you are the shepherd of your household. As an employee, you are the shepherd of that place of work. As the, as the CEO or the leader of the company, you are the shepherd of the people under you. As a teacher, you are the shepherd of the kids under your care. As a police officer, you are the shepherd of the citizens you protect. As a military person, you are the shepherd of all those under your care. 
as a nurse, you're the shepherd of those that God's entrusted to you as a doctor. So we are all shepherds. And we are called to participate in the shepherding ministry of Jesus Christ. And Jesus tells us what a shepherd should be willing to do. He says, I'm willing to lay down my life. That means I'm willing to sacrifice to give everything. Where else have we seen that at this time? We've seen that in our nurses and our doctors. We've seen that in people who are running towards the fire. Running towards this virus, not running away from it. As they watch and care for patients who are sick. That is a shepherd. Those are shepherds who are risking everything. So the question here today will be whether you are a priest, a family man, a teacher, whatever I am, does the description I hear in this text, does that look like me? Am I willing to lay down my life for my sheep? Am I willing to sacrifice that much? Or am I willing to just as much as quickly as possible? Just walk away. Jesus says, the hired man, when he sees the wolf coming, runs away. He abandons everything. He abandons sheep. Are you like that? When something is not working, when something creates more difficulty, you just abandon and walk away. Is that you? Does that define you? Or are you someone who is willing to take care of your husband, take care of your wife, take care of your children, even though they have conditions? you sticking with them and making sure you are the shepherd providing everything for them. Who as a teacher, a difficult student, how do you respond to all of those things? And, and the Lord goes on, says, when he has driven them out, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They will not recognize, sorry. It says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. That's something else that stood out to me as I, re I read this, you know, um, with the, the first reading. I have other sheep that do not belong to me. So, that is, that is an alert. All right, you should go off in your, I have other sheep that do not look like you. That's what the Lord is saying to me. Philip. I have other sheep that do not look like you, that don't worship like you, that don't do anything the way you do, they do it differently. I love them no less. I'm going to be their shepherd too. They're going to be part of the one flock. Just, just go back and that text. They don't look like us. They don't worship like us. They don't do anything like us. But he's also their shepherd. And he doesn't love them any less. So he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must leave. These also I must leave. And they hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd, the Christ. So you have brothers and sisters who don't look like you, who don't worship like you, who don't behave like you, who don't have, who don't have the preference you have, who don't think the way you think. Your job is not to keep them out. Your job is to be the best you can be, for me to be the best I can be in the family of God. So always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, today we just want to thank you for everything that you do. Every day you open our eyes at a time like this to learn new lessons to hear you more closely and more clearly, to align our ways to yours, to get closer to you, just so we can hear your voice in every sound. We beg you, dear God, that your spirit, the spirit that filled the house of Cornelius and his family, we fill our hearts and our homes, make us more willing instruments in your hands. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Almighty God, for all of us, that we may recognize ourselves in our role as shepherds after your own image. 
whether we are husbands or wives, whether we are children, teachers, policemen, priests, religious, whether we are doctors, nurses, in whatever capacity, grocery store workers, that we may recognize our role as shepherds of your people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our healthcare workers, people on the front lines of this battle. Pray, dear God, that first, you protect them and their families. Second, that you give them grace to care as you would care for your children. And finally, that their care may be effective for healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our priests, especially all those who have died from this coronavirus. Pray for our religious who have also died as a result. That God may grant them rest and that their spirit may rest in his peace from their labors. We also pray for a new, a new push towards young men and young women that your Holy Spirit may seek out young men and young women who are willing to step into these roles as priests and religious in your church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked prayers during this time. Pray for those who have brought their intentions to you to accept these intentions like a fragrant offering from this altar to your altar in heaven. And in return, O oh God, may you please bless them in every good way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, hear these concerns we have lifted. Listen to every other concern, fear, or, or care that we carry in our heart. We beg you, dear God, may all rise up to you. And please hear them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which efforts given and human hands have made it to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruits in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together in ending him of your glory as their claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body 
and blood of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer him board the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died during this period, O oh God. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and mountain saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And for me, to you, and to your families, may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter on the land. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Most gracious God, today we ask for your blessings to be with your children around the world who are unable to receive your body and your blood. May your angels bring this body and blood to their lives. May your angels bring the blessings spiritually. And may your Holy Spirit fill your hearts with his peace and his love. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O God, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew with eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for participating in this Mass. I pray that the graces you seek may be granted to you in accordance with your needs. So always I'd like to end by letting you remember that God loves you so badly. He loves you so, so much. And um, if there's anything you're struggling with, you feel you need to talk to somebody, please talk to somebody. This is a difficult time. No one no one is equipped enough to deal with this. No one prepared for something like this. So if you're struggling, please talk to someone. Talk to someone, please. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a song to our Blessed Mother as we continue to make our devotions in this month of May. We will sing Immaculate Mary. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. We reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria, in heaven be blessed, your glory proclaim, on earth we your children invoke your fair name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria, Thy name is our power, Thy virtues are light, The Lord is our comfort, Thy pleading our might. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, 
Ave, Ave Maria.